This module introduces collaborative governance as a useful concept for consensus building and dispute resolution in public affairs. Then, we will discuss key factors for successful collaboration to build a consensus in public policymaking, such as motivation for convening, trust building, and institutional design for collaboration. Collaborative governance has emerged in many parts of the world as a new mode of public policymaking and implementation that emphasizes collaboration between public and private stakeholders. While there are various definitions on collaborative governance, this module adopts the definition of Chris Ansel and Alison Gash on collaborative governance. Their definition includes a few important conditions for a process to be called collaborative governance. First, public agencies play key roles in convening any process in collaborative governance. Second, non-governmental stakeholders, including citizens, business, and civic groups, should be engaged in the process. Third, participants meet face-to-face -face in a formal and official process to make decisions. Informal interactions among participants or mere consultation by public agencies are not collaborative governance by definition. Fourth, decisions in collaborative governance are consensus-oriented. Fifth, even if participants make a consensus agreement, public agencies have the ultimate authority to finalize a decision. If you want to design and implement a process in the name of collaborative governance successfully, we need to answer two key questions on the conditions and the factors that can lead to successful consensus building among public and private stakeholders. First, we need to understand how public agencies can initiate or convene collaborative process and private stakeholders can participate voluntarily in that process. Second, we need to understand how participants can overcome potential roadblocks such as distrust, reconcile differences, and ultimately produce consensus agreement. In many real cases of collaborative governance in many countries, policy failures or deadlock with adversarial approaches often play important roles to motivate the parties to come to the table. Such failures and conflict often create mutually hurting deadlock that makes the parties perceive they are interdependent and provides the motivation for them to seek way out of a policy deadlock. Other enabling factors may help the parties to start collaborative governance process. First, if we have political leaders in public institutions who are willing to take a risk in collaborative governance, they can become a convener for a collaborative process. Second, if private stakeholders include the civic groups who are organized and based locally and have deep local knowledge, they are more likely to be motivated to focus on local problem solving in a collaborative process rather than engage in ideological and political power game. Third, if we have the third party neutrals as human resources, they may help to bring stakeholders together and get them to engage each other in a collaborative spirit. Another important factor for successful collaborative governance is trust. The lack of trust among the parties is a common starting point for a collaborative process. Even if they sit together, they may not still trust each other. They cannot be sure whether the other parties have a good will to collaborate, want to delay the process, or use collaboration as window dressing. Also, when a collaborative process is driven by a prolonged policy conflict, the parties are likely to distrust, suspect, and stereotype each other. Therefore, the issues of how to build a trust in such conditions and how to sustain it during the collaborative process are very important in practice. Many experts suggest two pragmatic trust-building approaches. First approach is called small wins approach. 
Small wins mean successful implementation of low-risk risk initiative or promises, first such as coming to the meeting on time, submitting necessary documents in advance. Trust can build on itself incrementally in a virtuous cycle with each positive outcome. Therefore, this approach is appropriate to initiate trust building cycle. However, when the parties with a history of distrust need to cope with lack of trust urgently, the small wins approach may not be feasible for initiating trust building cycle. Such a situation often requires an upfront negotiation to design the structure of collaboration as a more rapid and comprehensive approach to initiating trust building. Another critical factor for a successful collaborative process is to design institutional structure of collaboration appropriately. Institutional structure of collaboration includes the basic protocols and ground rules for a collaborative process, such as range of participants, scope of age agenda, deadline and meeting place, and decision-making rules. Since those issues are critical and strategic in determining the outcome of the collaborative process, negotiation and dispute resolution experts emphasize the importance of pre-negotiation among the key stakeholders to determine such a structure for collaborative process before they start collaboration. Unless participants can decide that it is possible to reconcile the differences fairly they may not be interested in participating in the collaborative process. Open, inclusive participation and transparent process are the key components of collaborative governance for the procedural legitimacy of the collaborative process. Also, designing the structure of collaboration is also related to managing power imbalances because the balance of power among the parties is manifested in the structure of collaborative process. Agreeing upon the structure of collaboration in advance helps the parties to form necessary expectations and reduce risk inherent in collaboration. In doing so, the parties may create necessary amount of trust enough to initiate trust building loop with a small wins approach thereafter. Now, let's review what you have learned in this module on collaborative governance as a consensus building tool. Collaborative governance as a new mode of public decision making may be an effective public dispute resolution and consensus building tool, as it requires public agencies to initiate collaborative process by engaging key private stakeholders in a formal face to face meeting in order to seek consensus. However, Making collaborative governance successful is not an easy task. Public leaders and private stakeholders must seize the moment out of a public conflict in order to make them voluntarily participate in problem-solving negotiation. One necessary condition is to design the structure of the collaborative process collectively so that the parties can initiate trust-building process and perceive the process as open, inclusive, and fair.